First annual debate um, brought to you by the SGA. I'm Arthur Tamayo, I'm the president of the SGA. Jason Mathis here is our vice president. Um, let's give uh, our contestants a big round of applause. Okay, so to my left we have um, basically the club um, that's um, representing SSDP, Students for Sensitive Drug Policies. And to my right we have individuals um, composed of SGA members and also members of SSDP themselves who are going to be um, taking the argument of against uh, marijuana reform and drug policy um, reform. Um, so, if uh, Jason, if you may, can you please open up with your opening statement? All right. So, I think marijuana um, should be legalized to control and regulate the market. Um, right now, the people who have control of the marijuana market are dangerous, violent criminals. A lot of people get the idea of, you know, marijuana legalization is letting these Cheech and Chong characters go do whatever they want and get away with it. What the real reality of the situation is, um, marijuana uh, prohibition puts um, the entire industry, uh, which is huge, in the hands of criminals. And these people are not Cheech and Chong characters. They are violent gangsters with money and power to do things that are incredibly inhumane. There have been over 16,000 murders in the state of Mexico um, since um, late 2006. Um, so that country is basically overrun by these violent criminal organizations that make two-thirds of their profits from the sales of marijuana. Um, and that's, that comes from an FBI estimate that two-thirds of these um, criminal organizations, they, they get most of their money from marijuana sales. So legalizing and regulating the industry would take power away from them, and it would also make the drug less available to kids. It would make it so we could put age limits in. Drug dealers don't check age limits. Um, you would be able to um, make sure that there are safeguards in place, just like any other consumer of any other good. When you pick up you know, a soda at the store, you know that it's exactly the same as if you were living in Alaska. It'd be the same soda, the same ingredients. Um, we need regulations such as that, warning labeling, those kind of things that you have on common consumer products. That is not the case with marijuana. If somebody's gonna go purchase it, they don't know what's on it. They don't know if it's got harmful pesticides. They don't know if there's mold that was growing on that marijuana out in that field. There's no way to tell, but when you regulate the industry, you'll be able to put a grade A stamp on that. So we know that there's no mold, there's no pesticides on that. Because the fact of the matter is, people are going to use marijuana, whether it's illegal or not, okay? The real thing we're deciding is, are we gonna tax that product? Are we gonna make it as safe as possible? Because people are gonna have access either way. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. <laughs> For um, the opening statement for uh, Khan, uh, we have Stefan here. Hi. Right. Right. If marijuana were legalized, um, they wouldn't they wouldn't be as informed about it in the next generations. Um, our generation now is really informed about it because it's such a big topic. But if it were legalized, it would just become like alcohol and tobacco. People aren't as you know as educated on it as they were when you know. Like when alcohol was illegal, everybody knew about it. Everybody knew all the problems about it. Everybody knew all the downsides to it. But if it were legalized, then people would, under, would, would start to push those facts to the background. They wouldn't listen to them as much. Because it's legal, we don't care. You know? if, if somebody's putting a stamp on it, then it's good for us, or you know, we, can, we can deal with it. Our opposing team talked about education, which it is a very good point. You, know, you think about alcohol, you have people getting dosed you know, in their alcoholic beverages, maybe not taking the safest routes, having rides home, drunk driving, things like that. We really need to be educated about those things. And because it's legal, we're never educated about those things. But we are. Intertwined with sex education, our harm reduction policy, where you're going to do it, and we morally don't approve of that, but we're going to tell you how to do it safely. We intertwine safe alcoholic beverage use. We tell you to never drive home drunk. We give you numbers of taxi cabs. We tell you how to put on condoms. It's general public education. <coughs> With the legalization of marijuana, instead of taking the abstinence only approach that our current policy mandates with our DARE program, to getting alcohol and tobacco, marijuana, heroin out of our elementary schools, 
you know, it's, it will allow us to instead tell you how you can do it safely, what signs to look for. It's, does that weed have green fuzzy stuff on it? No, man, it's all right, it's cool. You know, that's not cool. And we need to let everyone know after legalization exactly what they need to be doing and what they can best do to protect themselves. And I think our current policies restrict us in that area. So those are good points, but they're not mentioning um, the, are the dangers. There are dangers to these drugs. And um, what about cocaine? Do you want your six-year-old to start snoring cocaine? Do you want your five-year-old to start shooting up heroin? Do you want your school children to go home, uh, go to school all smoked out, and come back from school all smoked out because it's legal? Would you like that? Um, and yeah, people, not many people have probably been directly killed from it, but what about the people who die from heroin and cocaine? There are plenty of people who die from those things, and um, the majority of them start off, you guessed it, with marijuana. So you really need to be careful because if you let this go through, this is the first step in a series of potentially very dangerous steps towards um, full legalization of all drugs, which I think we can all agree is, is well, maybe we don't all agree, that it's uh, very dangerous for society. Well, you mentioned um, children using drugs, so nobody's advocating to put a joint in your six-year-old's hand. Um, what we want is regulation, and regulation would put age limits on who's allowed to use marijuana. Are there any age limits right now on who's allowed to use marijuana? Does that drug dealer down the street care if a six-year-old walks into his house to buy marijuana or not? He might have some morals, but then again, he might not. And what's the incentive for him not to? Um, you know, most of these people, they just want money. They don't care who's, how old you are, how tall you are, what color you are. They just want your money. Um, and if we put it in a regulated market, um, it would be less available to kids. I hear a lot about older folks saying, where's the marijuana? I can't find any marijuana. Who do they ask? Ask your kids. Your kids are the ones that know where marijuana's at. They're socially connected. They're the ones in high schools who can go, you know, two blocks down and go find pot with their friends who are selling it. It's because it's unregulated. It's because wholesale prices are available to kids to go sell it. Criminal organizations recruit kids to sell to their friends. That would stop when you put marijuana in a regulated market. You don't see these kids selling booze out of their backpacks because the profit margin isn't in it. They can't find wholesale prices for booze. If they can find booze, they have to get an older brother or someone to go to, to go use their ID to go do it. So it's a barrier for these people. Our laws, legalization of alcohol provided a barrier for these people. So now instead of just being able to go to, you know, that bootlegger that was selling alcohol back in the 20s. Now they have to go find someone else who's of age. And when you're 16, you don't really hang out with 21 year olds very often. You know, so you know, in my experience as a youngster, it was possible to go get booze, but I had to go to somebody's older brother or something. It was more difficult. You know, marijuana's right around the corner, and that's what we want to stop. We want to get it out of those pusher houses, and we put it in a regulated market. And the other thing he talked about was other drugs. People who are addicted to heroin, people who are addicted to cocaine, um, started off with <coughs> marijuana. And that, that's, by and large, is a constant that you see. Um, why is that? That doesn't prove a cause and effect relationship that, oh, I started marijuana, and all of a sudden I want to go shoot up heroin. It doesn't happen like that. Some people may be predisposed to these things. Some people you know, may have already done um, heroin otherwise, the thing is, marijuana is more available. Marijuana is everywhere. It's also viewed as safer, so people start off with that. But what, what we're trying to say is, um, you know, it doesn't prove that cause and effect relationship. And also, the heroin and cocaine problem is minuscule. Less than 1% of marijuana users ever go on to use hard drugs. 